<laughs> That's why I'm giving this kind of a look. Okay. But I'm glad to be in this meeting mm -hmm. or in this forum, and I'm mm -hmm. quite sure that uh, we are going to be able to discuss so many issues. Thank you. There you had it from the voices mouth. This is my guest for today. If you're tuning in, this is the Umbrella Show. You're just on time <coughs> where we get a brief nutshell of what Search for Common Ground is from the uh, program manager. Yeah, uh, thanks, Dalila. Uh, Search for Common Ground is um, an international organization. Our motto is uh, End Violent Conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in um, uh, 38 countries worldwide and um, headquartered in two countries, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. headquartered at... Um, in, in the US, mm -hmm. uh, New York, and also in Brussels, Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, our work basically involves uh, mediating uh, in conflict. Mm -hmm. We believe that uh, conflict is usual, uh, conflict is harmless, mm -hmm. but um, the product of conflict sometimes uh, degenerate into war or into um, situations that people you know, fall apart. Mm -hmm. So um, here we are. We have a tool that we call uh, common ground approaches that mm -hmm. we use to make sure everyone looks at a common ground in every, in every conflict. Mm -hmm. And we intervene in uh, different kinds of conflict, uh, including um, person to person, mm -hmm. country to country, uh, groups to groups. Mm -hmm. And um, like the COVID situation is a conflict for us and uh, we want to make sure people come out of the COVID situation happier, <laughs> Uh, healthier and more bonded. Mm -hmm. So basically, for us, conflict is our is 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 our ball. If you want to give uh, an imagery mm -hmm. of a football game, then mm -hmm. conflict is our ball. So mm -hmm. we want always to put it in a place that uh, is safe for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about a bit about you. So you've talked about the organization itself. Yeah. Now we want to know who Muhammad Mochosa is, uh -huh. just in a short span. Um, I. I think I would need um, one year to explain who Machausa is. But uh, Mohammed is um, a digo, a uh, young man who was born and bred in Imsambweni mm -hmm. by two awesome parents. Unfortunately, I uh, never went to school, mm -hmm. but they are very educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am proud that uh, from that kind of parenthood, uh, I, I sit here uh, holding a master's degree mm -hmm. in uh, program management um, and serving the world, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I come from Sambweni. I have um, done my schooling at Sheikh Khalifa, then finished at uh, Darulum. Mm -hmm. I went to my first um, uh, degree course at Moy University in Eldred, uh, four years. Came, start working, and then I did my master's at um, uh, University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But over the period uh, of uh, more than 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, I would say I have immersed my life in serving the communities. Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, 2007, mm -hmm. um, September, to date, mm -hmm. I am visiting villages and maskanis and um, groups of young women, women, children, and youth, mm -hmm. just making sure we inspire them uh, to, to ascend to their dreams. Mm -hmm. yeah. The essence of me asking you that question is, have you ever faced uh, violent extremism before? Mm -hmm. You'll answer that in a little bit. Let's okay. go back to Dixon. Dixon, yes. welcome to the show. This is home. This is where you belong, I believe. Yeah, this is where I belong. So who is Dixon in relation to Stretcher's Youth Organization? Okay, first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce Stretcher's Youth Organization. Uh, we are a youth-led Mm -hmm. community-based organization mm -hmm. that uh, was founded in the year 2011. Mm -hmm. So we are glad that we are celebrating our 10th year anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. So in November, mm -hmm. I hope I'll send an invite to you. <laughs> so we are looking forward to celebrate the success that we have, uh, we have made, some of the great intervention we have done in our community. And uh, just to briefly introduce Stretcher's Youth Organization, we work on a uh, youth thematic area and we work on issues around sexual reproductive health and well-being of young people. Mm -hmm. And we work on issues around human rights and governance. Mm -hmm. And we work on issues around gender equality and, uh, and uh, human rights. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the key issues that as institution you work around. So currently we have our HQ here in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have got plans to penetrate in Kilifi, penetrate in Kwale County, and also go to the furthest end of Nairobi mm -hmm. and other counties because, yes, we are developing strategies to ensure that how uh, will our impact be felt in those sub-counties or those counties. So Dixon Okongo, yes, is a young man here who is also celebrating his uh, almost 11 years on community work. 
just immediately after me completing my uh, fourth form education, I indulged myself in community work because remember, during that time uh, in 2010, there were issues around drug and substance abuse among young people. Mm -hmm. And you see, we were the generation whereby we felt immediately after school we were going to get job opportunities. We used to tell our friends or our colleagues that Mimi Suezi Kosakazi. Mm -hmm. So we knew that immediately once I'm out of school, I'm going to get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But later on, when the reality hit has real, we noticed that no, kumbi akuna zile kazi that we thought were existing in the community. But what did we do? Then I said, I pulled my colleagues mm -hmm. and told them then we can come together and try looking for these opportunities together mm -hmm. as a team. You see, by then, the issues around drug and substance abuse was very high. I remember even me losing some of my best friends, indulging into drugs and going, and me not seeing them today. Some of them have died. Some today, we can say, th their life will never be back again to how they were. Mm -hmm. So from there, we started Stretchers with Organization, looking at opportunities as young people together, mm -hmm. and indulging in different institutions, indulging in different activities to ensure that we get empowerment and ensure that we understand whatever, whatever government is doing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, born and raised in Mombasa County. Mm -hmm. I have a match uh, in my ID say that I was born in Saya County, mm -hmm. but born and raised in Mombasa Kenyan, County. So purely Kenyan. I'm purely Kenyan. Mm -hmm. So I normally say Mombasa is my home. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say, yes, in schooling, I schooled my primary education in, Mom in Mombasa. Then in high school, Kidogo, Mzazali Kona Wezo Kidogo. So I was taken to Uko Mashambani to go and continue with my study, but came back here after my fourth form education and continued with my university course at just here Mount Kenya University. Okay, wow. we've heard now, uh, we've a picture of what you were up to date. Now let's move right directly into our topic, how do we counter violent extremism? In that, let's start with your story, Mochosa. I was mm -hmm. interested in that part. Let's take a look at, because we want to talk to the youth who are out there and also learn from ourselves. These are things which do happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe they think that they're left out alone. They're only facing that alone. Now let's hear from you. What was the agitating part of maybe violent extremism before, before we start our first question? Yeah, um, Daniela, I, maybe f for me, I would want to um, look at it this way. Like, um, what, is, what is extremism mm -hmm. uh, before we go into violent extremism? And uh, violence sometimes doesn't necessarily have to be physical. Sometimes yeah. it may be emotional. Sometimes it may be social. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the first, um, grasp of extremism that uh, I found myself in was um, in finding myself in a school that um, uh, more than 90% is rich people. Uh, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. I later on I became a head boy in a school where I couldn't even have pocket money. Mm -hmm. And uh, my deputy head boy would be visited by his own car, Prado, okay. every time. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, um, not everyone, but there will be people who would want to rub it off to you that, you know what, we are this much, we can afford this much, we can afford this much, and you can't, uh, you, you are nothing. And some of us uh, who came from backgrounds like mine, where you, even the pocket money is a problem, even the, the, the bus fare to school is an issue. I used to close school and wait until evening, waiting for someone to help me with money to get back home. Mm -hmm. So... We were made sometimes to polish people's shoes. We were made to wash people's uh, clothes. We were made to do stuff that is almost um, of a slave. And um, that, is ex that is extremism. Mm -hmm. Because someone like cuts you to size to... Um, Underestimate you. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a mental torture. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel as if you, you are not a man enough or you are not uh, a student enough like other people. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an element of... Um, um, extremism. Yeah. Um, another element of extremism uh, may not be just me, but um, friends that um, I, 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 I live with. Mm -hmm. People have lost, some very, very close friends of mine have lost uh, their parents to violent extremism mm -hmm. in, 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 in Kuala. Um, people I relate to have lost um, mothers, fathers, they've lost um, um, you know, siblings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But a short story that um, I want to, to tell you, apart from the pain of finding a friend mm -hmm. who suffers the emotion of having lost someone too soon and feeling that someone was responsible for it. Mm -hmm. in, in, our, in our routine 
uh, work. I found myself in a hotel. I will I will not say where, mm -hmm. uh, for purposes of um, um, security and sensitivity. Mm -hmm. I found myself in a hotel, and uh, we've just gone there for for work work of transforming violent extremism. For such for common ground, we don't say we prevent or we counter violent extremism. We say we transform mm -hmm. violent extremism in a way that uh, we want to touch you, and uh, whatever situation you are in, you become inspired. Mm -hmm to want everyone to, to feel at home, to feel wanted, to feel respected, mm -hmm. all right? So get into this hotel, it's some of those sensitive areas, and um, you are lying on the bed after a long journey. Mm -hmm. um, just 10 minutes later, you hear gunshots. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God. What's happening? Uh, uh, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, maybe the colleagues you've come with are all over the place trying to do stuff. And you look over the window, people are scampering all over the place and making noise, and you're like, okay, that day has come. Mm -hmm. That day has come. Because it is within the vicinity of so many Ogi stories that have happened. And you're like, today is that day. <laughs> so you switch off your television, you switch off your phone, mm -hmm. you lock the door, and you find a place where you know even if a bullet was shot, will not reach you. I cannot find words to explain how those 10 minutes of me not knowing what's happening felt. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd said in open arms, death, come to me, I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. But later we realized it was actually an, an altercation between um, police and uh, border border riders um, that uh, led into gunshots, stuff that went into the hotel. Mm -hmm. But just putting yourself in that situation where you know today these guys are coming for us mm -hmm. and I'm here, I cannot run. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what we are trying to prevent. Mm -hmm. Because we get people getting those situations and they are real. They are not assumed like uh, my situation. They are real situation knowing mm -hmm. death, here you are, come and take me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's too soon, it's a student. It's a worker, it's a father, it's a mother who is making a living mm -hmm. and um, supporting uh, their spouses or maybe their children. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they reach to a point where they say, death, here I am, there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. It's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Let's uh, slide to back to Okongo. Yes. Uh, one of the most important, we've realized that there are things which trigger this violent extremism because a person doesn't find themselves in the extremism unless there is something which triggers just to touch on mental health, does it trigger or contribute a percentage to violent extremism? And if so, what are the things that we should consider in fighting it? Okay, thank you so much. And that was a nice story, <laughs> Machausa. So I, uh, one thing that you have to understand, like you said, I cannot just wake up today, then uh, I indulge myself in some activities we are becoming very violent. Mm -hmm. But uh, there must be something that must trigger it. Mm -hmm. One, uh, we remember as young people, sometimes uh, with the people we live around, we are always promised heaven. Mm -hmm. And when the heaven doesn't come into reality, then it affects your mind. Mm -hmm. Then it affects your mind. Sometimes maybe as a person, you had prepared yourself psychologically mm -hmm. on this opportunity that is ahead of me. How, when it comes, I'm going to receive it. Mm -hmm. Then that opportunity doesn't get into place. You don't get that opportunity mm -hmm. then it will affect your head it will affect your mind mm -hmm. psychologically then it will want you to you want to revenge mm -hmm. or the other thing that we have seen uh, that have affected most of young people mm -hmm. you see there's uh, this extrajudicial killing mm -hmm. a scenario whereby you see either your parent your brother or your mom being killed mm -hmm. on a broad daylight mm -hmm by somebody that you know that may, may either my brother had surrendered mm -hmm. or my mom had surrendered mm -hmm. or my dad had surrendered mm -hmm. but this person is being killed and you know he was the breadwinner of that family mm -hmm. so as a young person you will grow up with that thing in your head just the moment will be torturing your head each and every time mm -hmm. so until somebody come on your way that takes you through a recovery process mm -hmm. you will recover but if we ignore you and we either killed your father in front of you, then that thing is going to affect your mind. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why now, as a young person, while I'm growing up, I might, growing up, I might be growing up maybe not wanting to talk with specific people in the community, mm -hmm. either planning to revenge in future. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have seen some people even indulging in violent extremism activities, mm -hmm. not that they want, 
but that is the only place they want to revenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have seen, there's a, a self-belonging. You see, mo in our community, we tend uh, how the society is. We tend to view young people to be problem, to be solved, mm -hmm. but not viewing them as individuals that can help us come up with, uh, come out of the issues we fail. So if you see young person each and every time to be a so problem, to be solved, mm -hmm. then that young person will try to look for, where can I go? Very important tool. Yeah, exactly. Where can I go that people will appreciate me the way I am? Mm -hmm. And that is going ahead. Mm -hmm. You'll want to, to indulge in, a, uh, in activities that somebody recognizes you. Yeah. So those are some of the key things that are happening that you realize makes even young people indulge in these violent extremism activities. It's, it's more of a belonging thing. It, yeah, it's more yeah. of a belonging. Yeah. So you realize that until we change out of that, and the, almost, the only way that we can come out of such scenarios is that one, we need to recognize young people that they're important assets in our community, in development. Mm -hmm. Then two, sometimes realize policies are being developed, but policies, again, I remember, the, uh, I'll take you there. Policies are being developed just to, to make sure that we to solve the problem that we have, mm -hmm. and which this problem is young person. And that is why sometimes we have good policies, mm -hmm. they are on, on our shelves, just gathering dust. Mm -hmm. Because the people that are intended to these policies to benefit were not involved. Like I remember, when you look at this document, mm -hmm. it is a document young people w were involved. Mm -hmm. Their voices are here. Mm -hmm. That is why we go in and each and every young person in Mombasa County, mm -hmm. Kwale County and Kilifi County, they'll tell you, that document it is ours mm -hmm. reason being my voices was being captured there i mm -hmm. was involved i was asked mm -hmm. what do you want us to do what are some of the key policies C currently we are going into election mm -hmm. and this is the time that our politicians they will come with very nice stories mm -hmm. they will sugarcoat it in a way that we feel like now this time mm -hmm. we have missed heaven mm -hmm. so many times but this time we are, we are, we are it is expressed we are going mm -hmm. to heaven mm -hmm. but at the end of the day so that young people will be lured in that uh, scenario that we feel like, okay, then let's give it a try. But mm -hmm. later on, after election, two months later, mm -hmm. whatever you are promised is not being um, delivered. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? You will start revenging. Mm -hmm. Then when you start revenging, you will feel like young people are bad people. The young people are just involving in uh, uh, violent uh, activities, mm -hmm. but not realizing there's a mistake. Where did the rain start beating us? We promised these young people, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, but we never delivered. Then lastly, one thing I want to talk about, mm -hmm. anytime uh, we are engaging with young people, we need to understand their diversity. We need to appreciate their diversity. Mm -hmm. Not each and every young person you will invite in such a show, they can articulate issues. Mm -hmm. But this young person, when seated there, is able to write whatever we are discussing. Mm -hmm. So when you recognize that, you know that so-and-so, Mohamed Machausa, He's good in articulating issues. Mm -hmm. Dixon is good in noting them down. Mm -hmm. Then the other person is good in maybe somebody just sitting behind the camera. Dalila is good at airing them out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the moment you appreciate the diversity, young people feel like, yes, we are part of this community. We need to support it. Yeah. OK, let me yeah. rope in, Mwachausa, because <laughs> things are getting hot yeah, inside yeah. here. Now, there was a case in the morning in the newspaper where a 23-year-old was stabbed two times on the neck and head by allegedly uh, the boyfriend who was last seen with them. Mm -hmm. You advocate peace all over. Now, how do you bridge uh, this young youth uh, to an extent that they won't be able to say, like, I should go and do justice for myself because justice delayed is justice yes, denied. Yeah. So how do you advocate with this young youth? Because I believe you've been going to the ground. Yeah. Um, maybe at some point we'll need to talk about um, uh, uh, this booklet and why young people are very important. Mm -hmm. um, your story actually correlates with um, the, the question you asked um, um, Dixon around uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, young people, um, the most are, are falling the, the, the biggest uh, victims of uh, mental health, mm -hmm. and this is because of. Um, you know the situation they find themselves in mm -hmm. and uh, that's why search for common ground and uh, partners like stretchers are coming in to make sure we are we, we are seeping uh, beneath <coughs> uh, their context to make sure th they are able to think better they feel um, respected they feel um, wanted they feel appreciated mm -hmm. so a situation where a young man um, stabs um, a girlfriend or a girlfriend stabs um, stabs um, um, a boyfriend mm -hmm. 
is not the story because that's basically the destination but mm -hmm. the story is the journey mm -hmm. where did the rain uh, started be, uh, beating them mm -hmm. actually this is a young man who is responding to a certain aggression it could be emotional it could be social mm -hmm. and um, in what we do at search for common ground mm -hmm. we we try as much as possible to engage in trauma uh, in trauma healing process or mental health support mm -hmm. a lot of people would call it psychosocial support mm -hmm. to make sure that young man um, lives a life of appreciating themselves and of coping with um, a certain dynamics that mm -hmm. affect that affect them on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis so a lot of the time probably uh, the young person who gets to be stabbed mm -hmm. becomes a victim of um, of an assumption or of unhealed trauma mm -hmm. um, we believe that trauma that is not healed mm -hmm. is transferred Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. So if I have um, a girlfriend and um, I have reasons to believe that somebody else is um, actually approaching them or uh, pulling uh, the girlfriend from me mm -hmm. and I, I want to count the number of things that I've done. Maybe I've invested money, I've invested funds, mm -hmm. probably a house. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm the one paying the salon. I'm the one paying the, um, uh, maybe the rent and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I grow vengeance saying um at one point i am going to uh i am going to make myself hard sometimes either because you love someone so much mm -hmm. and you don't want to hurt them you don't want to, to disappoint them so you don't bring that story mm -hmm. you don't have you don't have a conversation around dalila why are you why am i seeing you with so and so mm -hmm. so you decide you are just going to um to brave it mm -hmm. but there's nothing like braving pain Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, I'll take you through uh, a mental health um, script a bit. In our brains, mm -hmm. there's the thinking brain, which is when somebody is very, very sober. And then there's the emotional brain, which um, mostly tempts people to behave emotionally. Mm -hmm. And then there's what is called the survival brain. Mm -hmm. The survival brain is what people call kishipa. Uh, it's at the back here, and it's red. So when, when that is triggered, it means you're either in danger or you are emotionally... Um, affected mm -hmm. and there are four types of um, responses mm -hmm. first response is called fight second is called flight the third is freeze and the fourth is submit mm -hmm. fight is when you are able to address that thing with your fist or with any physical energy mm -hmm. and then that the, uh, that stress goes out mm -hmm. second is flight I can't beat I can't beat her I can't beat him so what do I do I run away maybe you mm. encounter with a, a snake or a lion or whoever mm -hmm. then you run away you isolate yourself exactly you mm -hmm. isolate yourself and then you you, t you you get yourself off that stress mm -hmm. the third one which is the most dangerous is freeze when you freeze when when um, when, when you freeze it is that bad energy that is frozen in your chest okay all right and um, freezing depends on elasticity for you um, how much can you take based on your experience mm -hmm. or um, how big is that stress mm -hmm. at some point even if it's after 10 years mm -hmm. that frozen pain is going to burst when it bursts you either we, 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 we in, in trauma healing we call it either acting in or acting out mm -hmm. acting in is either you harm yourself or you harm somebody else okay. definitely when, mm -hmm. when, when it bursts it, it, it does that submit is when you say you know what this is too much and I, when you submit you either um, kill yourself you, 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 you commit suicide mm -hmm. or uh, you faint mm -hmm. or you plunge into um, a river or ocean and say this is it mm -hmm. so at the moment, the story that you are bringing is a story of <coughs> a frozen bad energy mm -hmm. bursting out. Mm -hmm. And this is to say, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I, I have really let you go on with this uh, stuff with this other guy. Mm -hmm. You think I don't, I don't feel it, but today I'm going to show it to you mm -hmm. by killing you. Mm -hmm. or by maiming you or by hurting you in whatever in whatever shape or form okay. so basically the explanation to that is a trauma that was not healed mm -hmm. and this is a young person who was not engaged to express their anger to express their feeling to express their frustration mm -hmm. so that if they are only assuming there can be a situation where they can be told no what what you are thinking is not true this mm -hmm. is actually the truth or if it's true then there are circumstances that you can cope 
or maybe you can walk away and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if it has not been taken through the process, mm -hmm. that is when you get someone hit someone. Mm -hmm. We've had stories of someone uh, hacking someone with a with an axe. Yeah. Uh, traveling nice. all the way from central Kenya yes. to uh, to western to hit someone with a, with with an axe. Mm -hmm. That journey is a journey of vengeance. Bile that has burst. Mm -hmm. It is so bitter. Saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. which is so, quite dangerous which is quite dangerous yeah mm -hmm. Thank you very much. If you're tuning in, this is the Umbrella Show with me, Dalila Hamza. I have Mohamed Mochausa from Search for Common Ground. And the other end is Dixon, who is giving us a smile and telling us it's going to be all right, discussing the issue of how to counter violent extremism. You can feel free to send your comments and your questions, and our guests are here, and they'll be able in a position to answer you. Now, let's move to Dixon. We see there are these young stars who have involved themselves in these gangs, okay? Right now, it's very violent. When you, when you go to certain areas, it's, it's a spotlight for everyone. Like, you can't go to such a place and mm -hmm. such a place like Kisauni and Likoni. They were mentioned to be very dangerous concerning the young, uh, the young generations which are there. Now, let's talk about, let's enlighten this young generation, this youth who involve themselves. They see, like, I should submit myself to gangs. You know, they say the easy way is to just steal from someone. If they can't give me it, I'll just put a knife. And most of them are teenagers. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, you see sometimes when we say most of them are teenagers and issues about unemployment, we can't bring it here mm -hmm. because uh, some are 16 years, 17 years. Mm -hmm. Where will we employ somebody with 16 or 17 years old? Mm -hmm. But you see, there's what we call in another program, uh, family matters or healthy choices. Mm -hmm. We are living in a generation whereby we have to accept that things have moved and uh, we are no longer living in an old age, mm -hmm. but we are living uh, in, an, uh, in a digital era. Mm -hmm. So whereby, this is a scenario whereby these young people mm -hmm. that uh, we have in our community or in our homes, mm -hmm. we need to listen to them. We need to know what do they want. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what are they going through. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I realize because uh, due to economic hardship, that uh, most of our parents face, mm -hmm. they don't have, they don't spend a number of time with their children. Mm -hmm. And that is why you realize at the end of the day, these children are indulging in so many activities that are not healthy. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example where I reside, just my, uh, my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I know of children, uh, we can say teenagers, mm -hmm. who are about seven to eight, mm -hmm. that uh, they tend to smoke bank mm -hmm. and they're below 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So they, they I don't know where they get bank and they smoke. Mm -hmm. So my question that I normally ask, Kwani Bangya Inuki, in a scenario whereby when this boy goes back to home, that a parent is not able to, to s smell, either sense that there's mm -hmm. something wrong mm -hmm. with my boy. Because Ali talk about Amerudi mm -hmm. and Anuka Rufingine Tofauti. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is the best way to counter these young people from indulging in such groups, one, we need what we call a family matters uh, program in a scenario whereby how do we ensure that we engage parents mm -hmm. with their teenagers to get conversation mm -hmm. and also not only that but also in schools because we can't say that these young people are indulging in these activities to steal to people they are because of unemployment no it's not unemployment mm -hmm. because one they're not paying rent these teenagers, mm -hmm. they still depend on their parents or their caregivers. Mm -hmm. So, and they, st they are supposed to be in school, mm -hmm. not in the street. But why are they not in school? So the moment as a community, we, we, you see, we are living in a scenario where by now we need to blend mm -hmm. whatever used to happen during these times, like in Amachausa and our time. Mm -hmm. Because I normally hear stories, people like Wachausa will tell you, while we were walking, we could have asked this boy, Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But with the current scenario, because the parent will tell you, no, who are, are you asking us? But I think now, why does it bother you? Why does it bother you? So if we bring whatever used to happen during old age and the current scenario of digital era, we put them together, then we are going to solve some of the issues that we are facing with our teenagers. Mm -hmm. Because yes, there are the people in uh, engaging in these gang groups. Mm -hmm. Because I know uh, a report that has uh, shown and uh, Machausa will bear me witness that the gang groups that we are, mm -hmm. that, that we are seeing, 
either in Likoni, Kisaoni, there are people below 18 years old. Mm. So issues of unemployment or saying that we want to give them opportunities to go and work, mm. it's a no. Mm. It's just a matter of trying to talk to them on issues around mental health, getting to understand their voice. Mm. We're not ignoring them. But we are living in a community whereby we as parents, we tend to ignore my 12-year boy that no bado ni mtoto ajuya nafanya, nitongyana inini. So the moment we come out of that era, and to an era whereby as young as five years old boy I need to talk to him to understand some of the behaviors then some of the issues around gang groups then Zita Toka. Yeah. Then we are living in an era also whereby we need to see a community. Mm -hmm. We need to take the responsibility as a community. Mm -hmm. Because today I can say and like I've given you an example. I can see those young people smoking bang mm -hmm. then I don't comment about it. Then it means I'm breeding that thing. Mm -hmm. So how should I take the process of going and reporting? Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I've gone and talked to my area chief and say, Kuna vijana kutana hapa kila sande, time flani, I want you to tefta vijana wako waje wa onini. So from there, the area chief is doing investigation to try to know who are these children, mm -hmm. who are their parents, so that mm -hmm. we can do a follow-up. The moment we'll take that responsibility as a community and start reporting such cases, mm -hmm. start taking that I'm assuming this could be my child. Mm -hmm. Then I need to take responsibility to ensure that I tame out this habit. Then we won't see young people engaging in gang groups in our community. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, Delilah, just, just a moment. Uh, um, Dixon has talked about um, family matters, uh, yeah. which uh, brings me to Jamie Bilabala. As such for common ground, uh, we have uh, implemented a project in uh, Tenariva and Garissa called Jamie Bilabala. Mm. And the framework of that project basically is about engaging young people within the framework of their, of, of their homes, within mm. the confines of their villages. Mm. You know, having conversation, parents and their children, having conversations, parents of this house and parents of that other house, mm -hmm. uh, having circles and talking about matters around uh, peace and security. Mm -hmm. And um, getting young people to, to be trained as peer mentors mm -hmm. uh, so that they can, they can be trained on, through common ground approaches where they can know positive ways of approaching mm -hmm. their challenges mm -hmm. and also going to inspire other young people mm -hmm. within their maskanis and wherever around positive ways of engaging uh, with their daily challenges. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what, Domi uh, what, what Dixon is talking about. is is called um, uh, Jamie Bilabala, a family level. Mm -hmm. engagement you gave them one-on-one -on -one talk and what's exactly really that a parent also understands what's going on in the child's in, in, in their in their in their teenage uh, children's uh, minds mm -hmm. Maku, i was in a wedding uh, over the weekend mm -hmm. and um, i saw a conversation around do we know what uh, our, our our children are going through mm -hmm. and one parent told me actually not not a parent but uh, a, a, a head teacher mm -hmm. told me that uh, he had a case um, last week Mm -hmm. where a parent had taken a child to uh, to the police, mm -hmm. reporting that the child to the police because had stolen a cow and, st and, and sold it. And this is a child who is in class four. Mm -hmm. And some of a the questions... A class four okay. child. Mm -hmm. One of some of the questions that uh, the head teacher asked the parent, do you know even what class your boy is in? He doesn't know. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know... So the trace of the extremism or the violence is traced to the parents themselves. Exactly. We, we have abdicated our responsibility. You know, every right has a responsibility, Dalila. We mm -hmm. cannot say uh, we are taking our kids to school and we want the best out of them, but there's nothing, there's no contribution whatsoever that we are giving. Mm -hmm. um, those people who uh, can actually give a pillar of the contribution between a child, a teacher, and parent, mm -hmm. parent has 40% to contribute, mm -hmm. while a child has 30 and... Um, and the school has 30 and the teacher has 30, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So basically, as a parent, you have the biggest contribution. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just to sum this up, Dalila, the, I'll give you a chance the matter of violent extremism is, is a, a psychosocial issue. Mm -hmm. It is a social issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, for as long as we want to address it as um, a criminal issue, we are not going to deal with it. And that's why Search for Common Ground, we are looking at all social approaches mm -hmm. to make sure we are transforming violent extremism rather than countering, rather than saying we are preventing. Okay. Can I add Trans something? Transforming. Yes, yes, you will. Violence. Yes, you will. Oh, okay. Let me just go back to him. We have the Mvuvi card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it end violent extremism? When you're looking at it's based on Lamu only, what mm -hmm. are the proceedings of the project, um, Joseph? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dalila. Mvuvi card actually was um, 
uh, w w was launched as a platform at a global level, not, not, not just here we are talking about Lamu, but then uh, we were in France in 2019 and we, 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 we gave this to the, to the, to the world. Mm -hmm. as um, a very good measure mm -hmm. of, um, you know, transforming violent extremism. For why Lamu? Mm -hmm. You remember uh, 2014, uh, there was a massacre at Impeketoni, yeah. and uh, a lot of people lost their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, before that, there was, um, after that actually, mm -hmm. there was um, a French lady mm -hmm. um, who was abducted in Lamu, mm -hmm. Amanda Island and taken to uh taken uh to cross borders mm -hmm. and uh, it was of course it was it was suspected that these were um you know extremists who who, who did it mm -hmm. so now what happened the government mm -hmm. unilaterally um you know stopped fishing activities mm -hmm. after dusk okay and um when you look at lamu 90 mm percent -hmm. of livelihood Mm. It depends on uh, on fishing. And when fishers cannot go to the ocean at 6 until 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. it means you have blockaded actually more than 50% of the probability to get uh, a catch. Mm -hmm. Mark you, if you are not supposed to be in the waters at 6, it means even if you live at 2 mm -hmm. and you are found in the ocean mm -hmm. at 6, then that means you are in the wrong you so for the charges. yeah 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 so mm -hmm. for almost um six years mm -hmm. the fishers were suffering mm -hmm. i don't know what did that stop violent extremism mm -hmm. it actually built it up mm -hmm. because okay. six thousand fishers mm -hmm. who feel uh, the government is pushing them uh, to the wall and out of the six thousand fishermen uh 40 percent of them were young people mm -hmm. these 2400 young people mm -hmm. who cannot go to fish uh, they are confined between uh, six in the morning to one in the in, in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and when the water has changed, it means they can't they cannot get a catch. Mm -hmm. Of course, that actually you know kind of kind of splashed a, a very bad test across uh, across the Lamu uh, population, and mm -hmm. people were like they are angry against the government, mm -hmm. and the government feel these people don't hear, and um, young people would say, if if I cannot do something that is legal. Mm -hmm. Why, why is it so bad for me to cross the borders and come and fight my own government, mm -hmm. all right? And um, fishermen who um, have um, wives and children who rely on, on that mm -hmm. also feel like the government is constricting them to a certain corner. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was bail after bail after bail after bail. Mm -hmm. And um, the, what we call mapambano between citizen and, and government were mm -hmm. so rife. Mm -hmm. So when we came in the conversation as such for common ground, we asked ourselves, can there be a middle ground? Mm -hmm. if, if, if fishers are, are stopped from going to, to, to fish because they can be suspected as terrorists, mm -hmm. is there a way that can be, uh, can be brought in to make sure fishers are legitimized as fishers mm -hmm. and suspects can be seen to be suspects? Mm -hmm. And that's where the conversation around in Vovica So came. how does it look like? Is it a card like the It's a card like, an card like a, like a national identi uh, identification card but um, that is Android enabled. Mm -hmm. if, if I am a security um, operator, and by the way, uh, this was done between such from Common Ground, Muhuri, K uh, KYBI, and other partners, and multi-agency security teams. So mm -hmm. Kenya Navy, um, uh, Coast Guards, Kenya Police, mm -hmm. prisons, maritime, and everyone was involved. It was a long, long journey. Mm -hmm. And because of, first, because of this, uh, this intervention, this innovation, mm -hmm. the government agreed to lift the ban mm -hmm. and let the fishers go back to fish mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so that's the number one big thing so if you are asking what impact did it bring the impact of six thousand fishers and their and, and, and their families mm -hmm. if we imagine each fisher had only four people you are talking about how many people twenty four thousand family mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. having a reprieve mm -hmm. all right so the card when 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 i'm moving, when when a fisher has that card mm -hmm. when they are found uh, during surveillance mm -hmm. uh, in the ocean, they are asked for the Amvuvi card. Mm -hmm. So that card, when it is run on an Android phone, mm -hmm. 
by the security agencies. It shows this is Muhammad Ali Machausa. Mm. He comes from this village. Okay. His Entire chief is this person. Village. And uh, he, he comes from a beach management unit called this. And the chairman of that beach management unit is this. Mm. He has three wives. He has four children. All the information. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it legitimizes mm. me when I'm found in the ocean so that the security <coughs> people will not ransack me or um, harass me. Mm -hmm. and make me fear to go back to the ocean again. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's the Mvovi card. Okay. Yeah. Now, for decades or for years, we've been seeing the relationship between the police and the young generation, or not just the young generation, the whole citizens at large. There are a lot of complaints, everyone pointing finger at the other. The uh, a police rapport had been tainted because some of them have been acting, some of them have been acting inhuman. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the issue. How do we, maybe there is something which goes on and you're like, I want to avenge this particular officer because we've seen the case where the, uh, the CCTV footage, which showed a man shooting two men, create a good relationship between the... In a, in a very good way. And that's why, you know, when, when I was to come to the studio, I wanted to bring Dixon mm -hmm. because that shows what kind of common ground Mm -hmm. have we brought by supporting Dixon and and, and, and such as youth. Mm -hmm. So apart from just citizen and um, and, and police, mm -hmm. uh, Dixon may, may, may talk about the relationship that we have supported to men between the border border riders mm -hmm. and the duty bearers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Let's okay. go to that. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, actually, yes, uh, I know personally I grew up getting the, the hearing everybody saying that police are bad people. Yeah. But yes, we can say we are human beings. Mm -hmm. But human beings, human beings is to an era. Mm -hmm. So maybe we might have one to two individuals within the forces who are tainted to be bad individuals. But the fear that people do have outside there, people do fear police officers more. So when we talk youths, mm -hmm. and these are male youths, mm -hmm. not women youths, but uh, because they have been having uh, a negative uh, approach mm -hmm. on the how the two handle each other. So I'll give you a practical example. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2018, we got some funding from Search for Common Ground, and uh, we implemented a project, we called it EBBY, Engaging Border Border Youth Leaders mm -hmm. on issues around security and name it. Mm -hmm. So this was a project funded by EU through Search for Common Ground mm -hmm. and the Inoka program. So, uh, I can give you an history of 2017 and 2018. <clears throat> there was a high increase of cases of people um, either, um, do we, how, what do we call this, uh, some violence being done, people using border border. Mm -hmm. So, we heard that ever somebody was shot and these people ran using border border. Mm -hmm. Either a shop was robbed and these people used border border mm -hmm. to run away. Mm -hmm. So, from there, we sat down as institution and said, this is how now the genesis, how everything started. Is Boda Boda industry a bad industry to our community mm -hmm. or a good industry? Mm -hmm. But we analyzed and realized, yes, it's a good industry. But out of goodness it is, it. but there are people who are using it negatively. Mm -hmm. Because we have Boda Boda operators who have got family, mm -hmm. and they depend on that as a, their way of source of income mm -hmm. to give back to their family and to pay their bills, mm -hmm. even pay their rent. Mm -hmm. So from there, we started a conversation. Then apart from that also, we noticed that in our community, a border border and the police officers were not seeing each other into eye because they felt like, no, the moment I come across a police officer, he will harass me, he will arrest me, he will want this, he will want that. So it means anytime they see a police officer, they have to run away. Or and actually the, avenge for yes. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the process of running away, they cause accident. Mm -hmm. Realize that I've, I have a scenario whereby somebody, a border border operator, was carrying a woman, mm -hmm. but there was a police traffic police officer who was coming on his way mm -hmm. because he saw the trapped police officer, he decided to go on his way to another way. Mm -hmm. So from there, he caused an accident. Mm -hmm. So from there, we realized that police officers and border border operators were not seeing each other and I. And they so, needed a common ground. And they needed a common ground. So from there, we, we, we came up with this program. Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that we bring that with us? Police officers, we bring them on the same level of, of conversation, try to understand how do you operate, how do we operate. So, so we are just bringing a common ground to understand mm -hmm. how border border individuals operate and how police op officers operate. Mm -hmm. Then we can say since 2018, we have seen uh, there have been an improvement mm -hmm. by, uh, if I was to measure it in scale, or into percentage, you can say by 80%. Mm -hmm. There's a good relationship between police officers and the border border operators mm -hmm. in Mombasa County mm -hmm. in a scenario whereby if something
thing was to happen in a uh, border border operator, mm -hmm. and maybe they are arrested. Mm -hmm. One thing that the police officers does, they call their leaders, mm -hmm. that, hi, we have arrested one of your members here, kindly come and intervene so that we can try to understand what's the issue. So out of that, we have also seen some of the border border operators mm -hmm. being nominated and even sitting in the district peace committee. Mm -hmm. That is something that had never happened previously. Yeah. Border borders Operator. are nominated as the, the Bakumi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So you see the border border can operate freely. Then the other scenario we know that uh, most of the time uh, a police officer will meet a young person and amuliza a copy mm -hmm. That already a young person will panic. So we have tried to have conversation that when, I, when there's a police officer and a young person amuliza a copy mm -hmm. just accompany that young person to go at a footage kitambulisho. Don't arrest that person. Mm -hmm. So those are the conversations we have had. And does that really happen in the ground? To, to, yeah, it happens in to places, some good. In places where it we happens. have supported these mm -hmm. conversations around uh, town hall meetings, moot because courts. Because many will ask you, yes, I don't have an identification card. And then the next... No, but, but the, the, the conversation that we have been bringing, mm -hmm. if you ask this person where is your ID, mm -hmm. and he or she doesn't produce, try to intervene. Why? Mm -hmm. Why is a, it that Sina? Is maybe, a maybe Dixon, um, mm -hmm. Dalila is asking, how is that possible? Uh, because yeah. a lot of people out there are like, Let's you know, practical they, 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 there's, there's, no, there's no possibility there. that, uh, you know, um, a policeman and a young person would, would come to an agreement. Yeah. And that's what we call common ground mm -hmm. uh, approaches. Mm -hmm. Through common gro ground approaches, mm -hmm. the likes of um, uh, Dixon and Stretchers, Huda in Kwale, uh, Self Community, KYBI in Lamu, and several uh, young, young, young organizations. We have collaborated to bring uh, young people in the same space with, um, with, with security actors, mm -hmm. including county commissioners, mm -hmm. and have this, co this very conversation that if I don't have an ID and I've gone to the shop and I've been caught, what happens? Mm -hmm. These very conversations. And to make it easier, mm -hmm. we have brought in um, what we call um, um, edutainment act, mm -hmm. where a scenario is played on stage mm -hmm. of, a, of young people uh, being maybe accosted by police mm -hmm. or young people accosting a police officer mm -hmm. and then it is frozen and the audience audience being police com uh, commissioner commi uh, police uh, police uh, inspectors of police lawyers you know account commissioners and other constables and every other person and young people mm -hmm. being told what happened mm -hmm. and they'll be like that scenario played in my life maybe a year ago someone would say it played in my life even a few weeks ago another mm -hmm. one say even the other day it played. Just the other time it Exactly. Happened. And like mm -hmm. that's real. So mm -hmm. if it's real, how would you amend it? Mm -hmm. And a policeman will be given an opportunity to, 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 to ascend to the stage and say, if I, I am, the law um, demands that I behave this way. Person would go to that situation and say, if I was in this situation, I would behave this way as a sober person. Mm -hmm. So through that, this conversation and the policemen saying, okay, some of us have, 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 have behaved mm -hmm. um, ultra vires and even young people would say, okay, some, some of us, because of the attitude mm -hmm. uh, towards us, we have acted this and that, but then this is the better way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we do what you call a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. And through the panel discussion, young people would ask all sorts of questions, the, the experiences um, in the hands of police. How do you even behave when you are arrested? How do you behave when in the police custody? Mm -hmm. How do you start even applying for cash bail, mm -hmm. even free bail? Okay. How, how do you even start uh, mm -hmm. looking for uh, bond? If you're in a court of law, how do you even look for bond? You know, it can be as free as you saying, my pastor is someone. Mm -hmm. And your pastor can be asked that, is this, a young, is this young man, if we were to let him go, mm -hmm. would you present him when we want him? Mm -hmm. And if, if that pastor says yes, the law demands that you are freed so it is as so because of that education gap mm -hmm. we have made it possible through so many places that we have uh, been able to operate as such for common ground mm -hmm. we have found um better stories of transformation mm -hmm. and the relationship between um, uh, young people and police mm -hmm. have really 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 transformed okay, i wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to finalize it yeah. with uh, another practical example mm -hmm. that uh, you are asking what do these things happen yeah, they do happen. Mm -hmm. uh, giving a practical example, there's a project we're implementing currently uh, named Pamoja Didia Corona, mm -hmm. trying to mitigate the harmful uh, effect of COVID-19 mm -hmm. on social cohesion. Mm -hmm. And we have seen, and it's something practical that even you know, mm -hmm. that currently people do put on masks because of police. They fear arrest yeah. from police. Mm -hmm. But what we have done as the police officers, we have gone to the, to the station and produced so many face masks in a scenario that if these police are on patrol and they get who don't have a mask, 
they will tell you it is important for you to putting on a mask because you need to protect your life. Mm -hmm. it be, we need you today and tomorrow. Because you don't have it today, I've forgiven you, kindly put on this mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. uh, to avoid the scenario of me arresting you, trying to as start to making so many phone calls. Machausa, where are you? Help okay, me, Dixon, 2000, I'm arrested, you, you see. <laughs> now, let's take a look at our social media side because time is really not on our side. We have Zakia Rajab is watching from us in Vanga, says, nice topic. Thank you very much, Zakia Rajab. We have Nzuma, the boss, she says, very educative. Good to those men. Okay, oh, Th those are congratulations you. to you. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, Gishna Babe who's also watching in us and so many people watching with us as we wrap up because time is not on our side. Now, Mwachos, I want you to figure out this and give an important talk to the viewer there, the person who's going through a lot and is thinking that maybe I, I, I just need to take my hand, fight back, you know, like I really have to do my vengeance or any kind of thing how do they deal with that kind of situation um uh, Delilah, just like i said um uh, these matters need a lot of time but then uh, just for this instance as um as someone from such for common ground i would say at any given time you are faced with a situation look for the common ground what is important is that even that person who hits you if you look at it um uh, broadly you realize Maybe um, there are 90% chances that you guys, you are agreeing in so many things and maybe just 10% mm -hmm. that you don't agree. So um, at Search for Common Ground, what we say is we want to transform relationship. And every time you feel um, hurt by someone or by a group of people, go back and reflect how many positives do you have um, maybe sharing with that person. And then before you act, just consider the harm that is going to do to the 90% good that you're already sharing, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And if at all you were to react, then react within the presence of the law. Because if you react outside the presence of the law, then you are going to put yourself in hot soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so every time reflect that when Dalila, um, maybe we, 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 we touch each other ab ab abrasively, mm -hmm. maybe 10 times before that, Mm -hmm. We shared very good moments. Mm -hmm. So for, for the purpose of that good moment, let us appease each other. Mm -hmm. let, us, let, let us find peace. Because I love the 90% that uh, I, I have enjoyed with Dixon. Mm -hmm. So I will want to, uh, you know, uh, a bit forget the, 90, the, 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 the 10% and find a way of resolving that 10% that maybe he's not very mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. forthcoming in terms of being a good friend. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to lose the 90 the ninety percent that he's been very good to me. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, Common Ground is about. And that's what we advocate for as such for Common Ground. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. To you, Dixon, your parting shots. Okay, for me, uh, being a youth advocate, I know there are a lot of young people out there trying to perceive so many things, but uh, they tend to give up. Mine is just be persistent in whatever you are doing. It doesn't matter how many times falls down, but what matters, how do you get up and start again the race? So I just wish you well. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Everything that starts has an ending. It's been quite short, but I hope it's been educative to you. And I'm glad you've stayed glued up to the end. My name is Dalila Hamza, but don't forget that there's Dear Ajami, which is coming up with Boss Chick and Tito Spencer, as well as tomorrow we'll be having a debate right here concerning the Chief Kadi. Is she supposed to be, is a lady considered to be a Chief Kadi or not? We'll find out from the law side, we'll get the religious side, and from the human rights activists. I'm Dalila Hamza.